Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about electric fence posts. I get a lot of people that send me emails. Uh, what What is the best post out there to use if you're you just bought a farm, doesn't have a very good fence on it, and you know it's got a lot of holes in your fence or whatever? You're wanting to bring animals on, and you know one of my uh, goals, and I tell people, you know, don't bring animals onto the farm until you have a good fence. And electric high tensile fence is a, is a really good fence once you get animals trained to it. But it always comes back to the post. Well, what kind of post is best, you know? And so we're talking about building, you know, a permanent fence, high tensile electric fence, high tensile wire. Now, what am I talking about high tensile wire? I'm talking about wire that's, you know, it ranges from 170,000 all the way up to 200,000 PSI. Uh, that's pounds per square inch. I, I really like the 170 and 180,000 PSI. It's just a lot easier for us to work with. Um, but back to the post, what, what is the best post? You know, I go, I go on farms. I've been on a lot of farms. I do consulting and such. And you go out there and you'll see people that's got, you know, a lot of uh, steel posts up everywhere. And they got those stupid little clippy yellow insulators that go on the posts. Folks, that's just a wreck. It's, it's a wreck waiting to happen, and I wouldn't even bring livestock in and put them on a fence like that. Because sooner or later, deer's gonna hit that fence and knock that wire off of that insulator, and then the wire's gonna come back and it's gonna be resting against that steel post. Well, guess what? You've got a dead ground and your, your cattle are out on the highway, or your sheep, or whatever, goats. It doesn't matter, uh, your animals are gone. And in today's environment, you just can't afford to have your animals out on the road. And so to me, a steel post is a huge liability. If you're gonna do electric fence, and if you're gonna make money in the operation today of any type of grazing, folks, you can't do it without electric fence. You just can't. Um, and so your whole, you might say your whole future, your farm, is getting that perimeter fence set up correctly. And uh, so, you know, a lot of people uh, prefer fiberglass. And so this is a fiberglass post. This one was in service for about uh, 10 to 15 years. And I painted it uh, black. Okay. Well, here's the south side of the post. <laughs> the sun took off all the paint. And once you get down to fiberglass on a fiberglass post, what happens is when that, the rain comes and gets that wet, that fiberglass soaks up the water, and now you've got ground. It's gonna, it's gonna possibly ground your fence out. And so I've went away from fiberglass. I mean, we still sell fiberglass corner posts, and those are fine if you can find them. They're hard to find, but you gotta keep them painted. I mean, you gotta keep paint on them. Um, but there's another post out here that's a whole lot better, and it's this one right here. Now this is, we're talking about, uh, this is called the timeless. This is a timeless post, and you can see uh, it's already sharpened on the end there. It's got a V on it, and you can drive this post with a uh, steel post driver. Same thing you do with a uh, you know, steel post, a uh, hand driver. They drive really well. They're, they're pre-drilled. They've got you know multiple locations, like if you want to run two, three, or four, five, six. This one has three, six. This one actually has eight holes in it, so you could run eight holes. You can run eight wires on this. I promise you there's not going to be a goat anywhere that's going to go through that. <laughs> They're just not. They're going to get shocked. Um, there's different sizes. Uh, this is an inch and a half, which I like. This is a, a four-footer. And then this is a wider one. Uh, if I was going to build a perimeter fence, uh, this is the one that I would use. This is an inch and three quarters. It's a really stout post. Um, they do make them in... Uh, Here's a, here's a brown, a brownish color. Um, but what I like about the timeless is when you go to build fence, the, the holes are already drilled. You don't have to paint them. You don't have to worry about UV. If you look at the edge of this post, see it from the end view, you see that white layer around the edge of that post? That is your UV protection, okay? So it's already got the UV protection built into this post. Um, it does have a depth a depth guide on it. Now, this is an old post that I just picked up outside. I've had this post for, I don't know, 10 years sitting out here. And 
it's going to get used, but I keep it around to show people. Um, see this? That was the sticker. That was the old sticker right here. You drive the post in to where that sticker's flush with the top of the ground right there. So every post already has a built-in depth gauge to it. So when you drive it into the ground, you just watch the sticker. And when you get it down flush, you're done, okay? Now, I talked about earlier, some folks have farms that have questionable perimeter fence, whether it's woven wire or barbed wire or whatever. And they say, well, Greg, it's pretty good except for in spots, you know, there's holes in it. And I said, well, you know, you could pull that wire back together. Let's just say it's barbed wire. You got a five strand barbed wire fence around your farm. Any wire that's loose, just laying loose after you'd want to secure those ends together and repole it and crimp it. But that's not going to do you any good if you want to rotate animals. So what I would recommend doing is taking this post right here. This is a four footer. Okay. And you can do an offset. So let's just say, let's just say this is your barbed wire fence right here. You put this post about four to five inches from it all the way around your farm, this one right here. And you can run one wire, if you had sheep, you'd want to run you know, two, one at 10 inches. And then on our sheep, they're broke to one wire, that would hold them in. And then for cattle, you want that top wire to be about 30 inches. So you'd have a sheep fence wire, and then you'd have your, your cattle wire up here. Um, if you had goats, you'd probably want to put a few more in there. But where I'm going with that is if you had power going around the interior of your barbed wire fence, so that as you rotate your animals around your farm, when you go string your wire, you're going to have a power pole. You're going to have a power source all the way around the whole perimeter of your farm. And that's going to be advantageous as heck when you go to start strip grazing or moving your, you know, your reels and your temporary fencing. You've got power. doesn't matter which side of the farm you're on. You've got power on the outside of that farm. And it's also going to beef up your perimeter fence. I told you, if you got questionable fence, what if the cows go through there or the sheep? Well, if you've got hot wire, what happens, folks, is if the animals are, are brave enough to try and come through the hot and then they get their nose up on that barbed wire, oh, my gosh, they're grounded. I mean, they are grounded good because that barbed wire fence has got steel posts on it. And his neck is hanging on that hot wire. He's going to get the bejeebra shocked out of him or her. That's it. They're not going to mess with it anymore. So an offset hot wire fence can really beef up an existing barbed wire or woven wire fence. I just, I guess where I go with that is make sure there's no loose wires laying out here next to your, your uh, high tensile when you put it up. Because what's going to happen is those wires gets on your hot wire and it's going to kill your fence. But just make sure you secure all of your existing fence wires, then put one of these in all the way around your farm. And now you're ready to start strip, strip grazing. You can move uh, animals on bigger paddocks, smaller paddocks. It doesn't matter uh, because you've got power. Power is everything in fencing. Um, the other reason I like these, this to Thomas, is you can, you can run the wire through the holes. Or if you've got a lot of bins in your fence, or you're going around a pond or a creek or, or whatever, uh, we can run wire on the outside. Okay, you can put your high tensile out here and run soft wire through that hole and fasten it on. And that way, uh, you know, if you have a lot of bins in your fence and you're going through those holes, it can kind of get kinked in there and it's harder to get your fence tight when you get all the wire up. We've done it both ways. Um, the best looking fence is when you run it right through the hole. I mean, it's sharp. There's no connectors um, and it's fast. I mean... Uh, and everybody says, well, Greg, what if you run it through the hole and your fence and your wire breaks? How are you going to get it back through there? Well, just put it back through and put a crimp on it and crimp it and you're done. You're, you're back in business again. So uh, these do have a 20-year uh, workmanship uh, warranty on them. And, you know, I don't know. I've tried all the competitors post out there. There's not a single one of them that will even match up to timeless fence. And I'm going to put a plug in the description how to get a hold of these guys. And uh, I'm going to tell you what, they'll help you. Uh, they're in the business of helping people with fencing problems. They work with it every day. And if you're, you know, have any questions about how much wire it's going to take or, and they sell chargers, uh, they sell fencing, 
uh, the actual wire itself, uh, the spinning jenny, pliers, you name it. You go to build fence, uh, timeless fence can be your one-stop place to get it. Um, the other thing I was going to say about these posts, folks, is it's unbelievable how stout they are. I've driven them through tree roots. Now, I'm talking about tree roots, you know, like, let's say, two to three inch diameter. They're sharpened on the end. If you keep hitting that post, it's amazing. It'll bust through there, and uh, you can't pull these things out. And I tell you, what happens is, as you drive this post down, this locking, the, the dirt, the dirt gets locked around this groove in here. And when you drive that thing in the ground 18 inches, 16 to 18 inches, you can't pull them out. I mean, you got to go, I, we use a jack, and we'll jack them out, but you can't physically grab and just pull them out of the ground. And I, I, I do like that, that part about them. The other thing is, they're attractive. Uh, if you've got neighbors, if you're living in, let's say you got close neighbors, subdivision or whatever, you're running a few cows in back or horses or whatever, you want your fence to look nice. And uh, we, you know, we lease land. We lease quite a few farms. And so the farms that we're putting this fence on, I mean, when we get done, it looks like a professional job. It's very attractive. But the best thing is, folks, I don't have a dead ground out there. This post is insulated. And at the end of the day, I can sleep at night because I know if a deer comes by and hits this, it may push it over, but it's going to come back up. And we had a tree fall on our fence up the road here and on one of our lease farms, and the tree hit right here on top, and it bent the post over like that. It was an ice storm, okay? I was so busy trying to keep everything going between the cattle and the sheep, and, you know, we were without electricity for three days. I finally went out there about a week later. I need to cut that tree off that fence. Well, it was bent over for, you know, eight, eight to 10 days. When I cut the wire, when I cut the, the, the tree off the fence, it kind of came up a little bit like that. I'm like, man, that's kind of ugly looking. I wonder if that post will straighten up. In 10 days, with sun shining on it, it came back up straight. Folks, it didn't bend, and I mean, it didn't have a permanent bend in it, and it didn't break the post. And we're talking, I bet that tree, I don't know, it, it had to weigh, you know, eight or 900 pounds. It was a green, great big green limb that fell on it. Took it over, cut the limb off, it came back up. So that's huge. Um, so I can't say enough good about Timeless Fence. And uh, check, the, check those guys out. They're down there in uh, Tennessee, a good, a good group of people. I believe it's uh, Greensboro, Greenville, green, Greenville, Tennessee. I'll put their address on our web on the uh, description on this video. Anyway, those y'all getting ready to build fence, keep your steel out of your fence. Steel post. Timeless. Build it once and be done with it. Don't go out there patching your fence up all the time. Life's too short to be doing that. Y'all have a good one, and uh, we'll see you down the road, and good fencing to you folks.